We ready? Okay, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I call this meeting of Independent School District 544 to order. Uh, due to the current federal and state, one moment here, I want to Due to the current federal and state emergency declaration, the Minnesota Directive to residents to stay at, stay safe, <laughs> and the guidance about limiting person-to-person -person contact due to the COVID-19 pandemic, this meeting of the Fergus Falls School Board meeting is being conducted in accordance with Minnesota Statutes 13D.021. Uh, with that, uh, Clerk, will you establish a quorum for us, please? Kirby Anderson. Here. Natalie Knudsen. Present. Matthew Lemon. Here. Missy Kirby's here. And Stephen Vegasa. I think you sit here. Thank you. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the agenda as presented? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Uh, Kirby Anderson. Yes. Natalie Cole, oh yes, Matthew Lemke. Yes. Missy Hermes, yes. Stephen Vegasa. Uh, the motion carries. Thank you. Uh, we have a resolution on acknowledgments. And I will have our second. I'd like to offer the following resolution and move for its adoption. And thank you to Anna McGarry for the donation to the Otter Angel account, an account created to anonymously assist families unable to pay for student meals. And thank you to Calm Dell Innovation for their donation of steel to the KSS machining program. And congratulations to Danielle Buckmeyer and the Kennedy Secondary School students in grades 6 through 11 who competed in the Minnesota National History Day State Finals. Haley King and Solby Smesna earned honorable mention in the senior group division category. And Karen Gullickson earned honorable mention in the senior individual exhibit category. Do we have a second on that resolution? A second. Really? Thank you. Uh, any discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Um, Melanie Cole. Yes. Matthew Lemke. Yes. Yes. Stephen Vigasa. Yes. And Kirby Anderson. Yes. Natalie Kinson. Resolution is adopted. Thank you. Can you hear Natalie or Steve? Yeah, Natalie, second is here. Here, here. Okay, moving on to reports. Just one second here. Scott, it's just to I'll make sure you come through. Um, we're going to do our first uh, report, our elementary principal, Mr. Kobeck. So 
crazy uh, old like this, the staff of the schools are going to social distance themselves around the school block. Well, the families of our students are going to be in their cars circling uh, the school block in a uh, clockwise fashion. It will be, uh, will be really fun and exciting to see all of our, our students again, and I know our students are looking forward to seeing their, their teachers. A couple of things about the grade will be really, really important, um, that our families remain in their cars. I have a hunch that the traffic will be slow because I think uh, people in the community will notice that there will be very, very heavy traffic between the two hours of 4 to 6 on Thursday. So we're just going to ask all of our uh, students and families to remain in their cars and uh, we're going to just have a really good time safe, ready. But we're hearing some great ideas of some different things uh, that are going to be happening at the parade and some reports of some live music. So, uh, see what, what comes of that. It will also be important that, uh, that nobody's parking, of course, on the school side of the street, and we'll make sure that we uh, take care of that leading up to the start of the break. I want to just thank our uh, local police department. We uh, ran the ideas of these grades, passed to them, and uh, received their uh, blessing. So we thank them because we know that's, that's probably going to affect some traffic patterns in the a little bit during that time. You know, while I'm, while I'm uh, mentioning our, our local police department, I wanted to just uh, mention uh, Officer Abram Silvernagel, who has been our, our school uh, resource officer over the years. And uh, I know recently he received a promotion within the ranks of sergeants. So he's not going to be our school resource officer anymore, but we have really, really appreciated his work. I believe that means that Officer Cedarberg, who was spending about half of his shift um, being a great presence at the three elementary schools, I believe he's going to be moving into that full-time SRO position. Uh, and then I've also heard that uh, perhaps Officer Kitzman will be then coming into the role that Officer Cedarberg was, was uh, holding for us. So I uh, just can't thank those people enough for their good work. Just happy that we're going to get to continue to work with a number of them. I should mention that um, Friday of this week is uh, our last day of school. It's a half a day. Uh, that should not be confused with uh, the last day of child care. Now, the last day of child care is also on Friday, but that is not a half a day. That is a full day of child care. Child care will run from 7.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Friday, well, our last day of school on Friday uh, goes till about noon. And then uh, a big shout out to our tech department, who's going to be busy here pretty soon, collecting all of the notebooks that have been distributed to our students. Um, for our elementary schools, Chromebook return will happen on Friday of this week, starting at noon. Anytime from noon until 6 p.m. And also, Monday, June 1st, from 8 a.m. until 7 p.m. The public return will be at Kennedy Secondary School. Also want to uh, just recognize and congratulate Kristen Knudsen. Kristen is a second grade teacher at Adams School and has been for the last two years. And we wish her well as she has accepted a first grade teaching position at Centennial Elementary School in Fargo. Um, we're happy for Kristen, although we're sad to see her leave. We're happy for her and that um, Kristen and her husband and their new baby girl live in West Fargo. So with her teaching in Fargo, she will get two hours of her day back without an hour traveling each way from West Fargo to Fergus Falls. And then I just want to give you, uh, as board members, a quick update on our kindergarten registration. Uh, the latest numbers, as I checked this morning, we're currently sitting at 147 students. 138 of them are registered for all day, every day. Three of them are registered for the morning, morning only option, and then six of them for the Monday, Wednesday, Friday option. 
Uh, so we're at 147. I should really say that maybe not all 147 are officially registered, but some of them in that group have told us they are coming. It's just a matter of we need them now to uh, take the next step and do that uh, official registration. Uh, with that, I think I'll just kind of stop. I know that was a brief report here this morning, but uh, that's what I have for you, and I can entertain any questions at this time. Any questions for Mr. Kulbeck? How many um, potential students still have not committed to kindergarten in the fall? Maybe uh, a couple more things as I'm sitting here thinking about this. I just want to tell you a quick story. I was talking to a student at McKinley School the other day who comes for child care, and I asked the little boy, I said, hey, what's your favorite part of child care? What's your favorite part of the day? And he shared with me that arts and crafts were his favorite part of the day at child care. And that surprised me a little bit, but then it didn't because I thought about uh, some of our support staff during this time who have really stepped up and they found themselves in some roles that they initially didn't sign up for. And uh, we have uh, two people in particular, particularly who have been in charge of some crafts, and then, uh, they have just taken on that task and their creativity has come shining through and they're creating just some really, really engaging and nice activities for our students. So I wanted to share that because that's just one of many many, many examples of the neat things that our support staff have done throughout this uh, time of child care. I've even some, seen videos of some of our child care workers singing songs and then videoing those songs and then sending them to the teachers who are sending them out to their students. Uh, so some really, really neat things. I've also seen some fantastic activities from our teachers. They have really stepped up to the plate here during this time and, and have gotten creative as well in how they're delivering instruction through this time of distance learning. So kudos to our staff uh, this last week here. Uh, we're not pushing out any new instruction, but we are still continuing to continue to make connections with our students and uh, push out activities to them here during the last three and a half days of school. Try it again. Um, Mr. Kolbeck? Mr. Kolbeck, can you hear yes, us? I can, I, can, I can hear you just a little bit. Uh, Mr. Kolbeck, can, do you have an idea of the potential number of students that might still be signing up for kindergarten? Well, I can, I can look at the kindergarten census and know how many, how many haven't signed up, but of the numbers that haven't signed up with us, they fall into many, many categories. Uh, many of them tell us that they're uh, not ready to send their child to the kindergarten yet, and they're gonna wait one year. Um, others, uh, there will be uh, attending other schools, either within the community or within the area. Um, and others, quite frankly, um, and this happens every year, so it's something to be alarmed or worried about, but there's others on the list that we just can't get a hold of and that we don't hear back from. But um, many of those student or families probably moved and moved on since uh, their child's name ended up on the census since that is a list that started, you know, four or five years ago uh, and continues to grow starting with that first student who got on the census many years ago and so what we have today. So am I able to project out? I know this. I know we'll at least have enough students for the eight kindergarten teachers that we have ready to go. The challenge will be, it's not really a challenge, but what we'll have to do this summer is, like we always do, we keep a very, very close eye on those numbers. And at some point in time, we'll have to decide, are we going to go with eight kindergarten teachers in the fall, or will we up needing to add a ninth section and going out and hiring the kindergarten 
teacher later in the summer. Any other questions for Mr. Colbeck? Thank you, Mr. Colbeck. Our next report will be from Tindy Run, our elementary principal at Cleveland. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. 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 Good special events that happen during the month of May, and um, some of those things that if we were in session, we would have had um, several various field trips. Um, this year, our second graders had been to go to Chihanka Bazoo. That was a new uh, field trip that had been added um, with the support of our honor PTO. Um, fourth grade classes spend a day at Glendale Park, um, and those things just weren't going to be happening this year. Um, our PSC Celebration Day and Greenhouse Transplanting Day is a, um, a big deal out of the prairie science classes. Um, students in the prairie you know, science classes harvest seeds in the fall, and those seeds are dried through the winter. And they spend time out in the greenhouse planting those seeds and doing lots of different experiments of watching them grow, um, whether they're fertilized or um, different levels of sunlight. Um, but they do lots of experiments and data collection and then at the end of the month of May they go out into the field and plant those prairie plants so that's um it's kind of a big deal um, out of prairie science class and that's kind of been put on hold this year but fourth grade um, students would have had their band visit at to Kennedy Secondary School and their band sign up um, our fourth grade orchestra tour um, would have taken place the fourth graders take a day and, and um, tour through all of the elementary schools in town and perform a concert um, where we really hear their progress in the course of the, of the year. And then um, uh, many classes had a special field day um, planned as well, but they just um, venture outside into the lower green space at Cleveland and into a variety of field activities. So those are some things we're pretty, you know, we just talked about those special events. Um, that take place in May. And then we, we've had several teachers um, step up to the plate and help these, um, a couple of special May activities take place virtually. Um, one thing that did happen on May 1st, um, teachers made their way around town and outside of town to students' homes and um, spent time delivering May baskets and special messages um, to say hello in respect to social distancing. So lots of teachers put some extra miles on um, reaching out to their, their students and just being able to see people in person and deliver some special messages. Um, with the help of Ms. Ariel Crone at the Public Library, um, they were able to uh, do a public library visit, um, which typically she comes to each of our elementary schools and um, talks to all the kids about the summer reading program. This year, she was able to promote a summer reading program that will be taking place online. Um, it begins June 1st and runs through July 25th. So uh, there's lots of resources right on our <coughs> public library website, um, giving parents and students a good overview of the summer reading program. Some really neat things are happening there. Um, one of those uh, components is a virtual book bunch. Um, there will be a virtual book bunch or book club um, taking place each Thursday afternoon from fourth through eighth grade students. So the public library is really doing an excellent job of reaching out to um, all, all students of all ages to promote that um, literacy and reading throughout the summer. Um, another virtual activity that took place here recently, um, in each spring of the year we have our second grade classrooms um, come over to Cleveland for a little welcome and orientation to the school that they will be attending next year. Um, we spend time, have those second graders spend time in the third grade classrooms with third graders and teachers and get to have an opportunity to meet some of the staff that they will be working with in third grade. Um, this year, our third grade teachers put together a video welcome. Um, we each recorded a little snap and um, had it, we're on the screen like the Brady Bunch and um, introduced ourselves and talked a little bit about what uh, we do and then um, we provided a virtual mini 
tour of Cleveland and some of those common areas that we will frequently see and spend time in next year. So it was really fun recording that um, Zoom meeting just to introduce ourselves um, so those incoming third grade students could have a chance to meet meet the teachers and see some faces that they will be uh, they will grow to know next year. Um, I also wanted to just uh, acknowledge the work of our special ed department, our title department, and our RTI interventionists. Um, those services uh, needed to kind of pause at first um, to get the uh, distance learning up and running, but those um, intervention support services really stepped up to the plate as well and um, did their diligence with supporting students, providing accommodations, um, providing that ongoing intervention service that they have had during the school year. We had some special ed parents who uh, routinely provided support via Zoom meetings for kids. Um, our title staff um, were able to utilize, with the help of the public library, were able to utilize a program called Read Live. And uh, parents were connecting with students and working through the Read Live programming with them. Um, and it was fun. Um, I was able to kind of jump in on some of those sessions and say hello to the students and hear them read and offer some encouragement as well. Um, that's a very uh, outstanding program and, and we were fortunate to pair with the public library and um, utilize that. So a lot of shout outs to the, the, the continued support, special ed instruction and support that has been provided to the students. And then just as Ms. Mr. Kolbeck noted, um, I wanted to acknowledge to the great work that our parents have been um, doing in regard to child care. Um, now that the weather's been nice, they've been taking lots of advantage of getting outside and doing some outdoor activities. Um, so those kids have lots of movements and fun during those child care hours. Um, four of our staff members, four parent educators, have been spending lots of time at their sewing machines. And um, it's been a great way that um, our first schools, public schools have been able to join that community support in sewing um, face masks um, for the Fergus Falls face mask group. Um, as well, Lake Region Healthcare reached out to this group and asked if they could sew um, head coverings for staff at Lake Region Healthcare that were in need. And um, the parents um, spent some time developing a pattern that was going to be really workable and functional. And um, they went to town and been sewing face masks and headgear and it's it's really kind of fun to just step inside that room and watch them um, do their work. They are, they are sealed seamstresses and uh, have not stopped every day. They've stepped up and kept going. So. Um, I also wanted to, um, kind of one really happy, exciting thing that arrived last week, the Wonders curriculum arrived. So our new reading language arts curriculum was delivered to the districts last Thursday, I believe it was. And uh, we teachers are really anxious to get their hands on those materials and uh, they received the electronic resources via those links and uh, they're hoping to spend some time this week collaboratively looking at that curriculum and uh, unpackaging it and having that to study throughout this time and during the summer. So that was really exciting. I know Mr. Colbeck, you took a picture of the truck being unloaded and kind of sent that out to staff members so they could see that it was actually, actually here. And then as well, um, I also wanted to acknowledge that we have the drive-by celebrations taking place this Thursday evening from 4 to 6. And um, those will be a time to um, celebrate one another and the hard work that's gone into making distance learning um, the possibility that it, that it has been and providing that ongoing instruction. So staff, I think, are just as excited as the team, the students and their families um, just to see each other and um, wave at each other. And um, lots of fun things are planned. We have. Um, we have um, some posters that have been made and banners and music and um, lots of fun things planned for Thursday evening. So um, I hope everybody does have a chance to join that drive-by celebration and celebrate the, the hard work that's gone into this successful school year. And that, um, with that, I think I will conclude my report for today. Any questions for Ms. Run? Thank you, Ms. Run. Our next report will be from our secondary school principal, Dean Monkey.
D, can you hear us? I think we lost uh, Mr. Lepke. Uh, yeah, that muted himself, or I think it's my turn. Does that sound right? That is correct. <coughs> All right, sounds good. Um, well, thanks uh, for uh, an opportunity here to share with you a little bit this morning. Um, usually at this time of the year, uh, it can be a busy time for us just in relationship to um, making some teacher hires. And uh, probably, thankfully, um, we've had just a few of those options here uh, this spring with kind of a unique situation in relationship to interviews and kind of posting positions and, and meeting people. But we have had a couple of positions that we've been working on. Um, we have one elementary opening here in the fifth and sixth grade area. Um, we have a couple of different special education teacher openings. Uh, and then we also have a um, high school ALC part-time English position. Uh, so we conducted a couple of interviews last week uh, over Zoom, and all those uh, went well. And uh, so we'll continue to work on that here now over the course of the next couple of weeks see if we can get uh, some of these positions filled here um, in the early part of the summer months. Um, and then, of course, this is graduation week for us. Um, and uh, I tell you, I, I just can't thank enough all the people who have stepped forward in relationship to putting them together um, our graduation program uh, and events um, for this week. Um, it started in early May idea came out of the high school office from uh, Mr. Toki and uh, Al and Brenda there in relationship to making senior manners uh, available for all of our senior graduates. Uh, fantastic idea. We had great cooperation from uh, Cindy Everett and, and Carrie City at uh, the school store. Uh, and you've been enjoying those on Freiburg Avenue here now over the course of the last uh, couple of weeks. Uh, and, yeah, just in the one example of stepping forward in some unique circumstances here to try to make sure we get an opportunity to recognize our senior graduates. Uh, our uh, ceremony this year uh, will be virtual. Uh, it will be available with a link uh, from the off the school district website. So uh, obviously that is not active as of yet, um, but come uh, Thursday night for our high school ALC virtual graduation ceremony. Friday night at 7 o'clock for our um, Kenny Secondary School ALC IQ Academy graduation. That link will be available online on the school district website for anybody who wants to uh, tune in and uh, check out our graduation program. Um, once again, uh, people like Roy Anderson, Jesse Thorstedt, Mindy Christensen, uh, they have been working tirelessly behind the scenes uh, to do all of the editing and uh, together of this uh, program uh, over the computer uh, and uh, their skills are shining through because I've seen a little bit of a sneak preview and I think everybody is really going to enjoy uh, this program. Um, we did invite our, our seniors, uh, one household at a time, uh, to come in and get an opportunity to walk across the uh, stage. So we've got the majority of our, our senior graduates filled in that capacity uh, and that will be shown on the screen. Fortunately or unfortunately, from what I've seen, uh, the, the time it takes to do all this will probably be uh, no shorter than a regular graduation ceremony. Uh, but I think people are really going to enjoy it. We have some fantastic seniors that volunteered to speak for us. Uh, a lot of people from the community came in uh, to say a few words. Uh, and we've got some great special music which you're really going to enjoy. So uh, are you ready to tune in for the High School ALC graduation at 7 p.m. on Thursday, that would be the 28th, and then for our high school graduation, we'll go ahead and tune in at 7 p.m. on Friday, May 29th of this week. Um, and then after that, uh, once again, um, just because of some wonderful cooperation from our community, um, we're offering a fireworks show to our graduating seniors and their households um, after um, the ceremony. Exactly on the time that we're looking to have those households graduate uh, gather uh, in a vehicle, a household vehicle here uh, at the Kennedy Secondary School approximately about 9 p.m. Um, from there, we'll make our way out to the fairgrounds uh, and have an opportunity for basically a private showing um, with some fantastic fireworks from uh, uh, the 
uh, shown out at the um, West Carter Till uh, Fairgrounds uh, here right in Curtis Falls. And uh, you know, some of the people that stepped up to make that happen. Uh, first, we got a really big shout out to Mayor Benshire. Um, I talked to him about this idea early on, and uh, Ben said, well, I, I think I know somebody. You know, and you always get a little bit weary when people start saying, I think I know somebody. Well, uh, Mayor Shire actually did know something. That person got back to us right away, um, was able to uh, do the fireworks show for us, uh, and uh, so he kind of helped get all that stuff started. Um, along with um, the, the city, the city council, Police Department, Fire Department, uh, the Fair Board, um, uh, Post Prom Committee, uh, Sheriff's Posse. Uh, there's just many, too many to mention here, but everybody, anytime I called somebody, they basically just said, What can we do? We're looking forward to help. Uh, and also on that evening, we have some great cooperation coming from uh, Lake Broadcasting and Lakes Radio here, um, starting at 7 p.m. on Friday night whole ceremony and everything is going to be basically live on the radio at 97.7 uh, on their FM channel out there. And uh, we're going to be uh, hosted by Craig Wilson and Mary Gowen uh, for the evening. And we're going to run all the way from 7 p.m. until 10.30 at night uh, covering uh, the whole graduation event. Uh, so again, uh, just another example of the community stepping forward uh, which radio here offering to uh, cover that. And also on the Fergus Mallow app as well. So we hope as many people as possible can tune in. Um, we do want to let the public know that, uh, as we mentioned, uh, the fireworks display itself out in the fairgrounds is a uh, private showing in relationship to being on the grounds. Uh, that we're going to reserve for just our uh, senior parents and our household, senior, seniors, their parents, and their households. Um, and so but uh, from what I'm told, uh, this display will be available to be seen across the community uh, because it's uh, going to be in pretty high quality. Uh, so other than on the fairgrounds itself, there's probably other opportunities for the community to view these fireworks approximately 10 or 10, 15 p.m. Uh, on this Friday, May 29th. Uh, so once again, thanks everybody for helping with that. Um, and I should also make mention that uh, during our high school ALC graduation, we're looking to have uh, upwards of 28 seniors graduating from that program. We believe that this is the highest amount uh, that we've ever seen coming out of the ALC for any one given year. Um, and we also have uh, over 40 graduates coming from our online school for the Falls IQ Academy. Uh, and some of those students have also elected to participate uh, even in the ceremony here this Friday night. Um, so, a lot to be thankful for, and a lot of people work very hard to put uh, all of these programs on. Uh, other upcoming things, uh, usually once in June here, we have a um, middle school summer school program that we run. Um, this year we're going to push that back a little bit. The first date with which we would start that would be July 20th, um, and run four weeks from there. Um, we're hoping that by July 20th, at least in small groups, we can really is uh, in construction uh, within the school itself. So that's why we push that back to July 20th. Uh, we do have some credit recovery happening uh, for any of our high school students that will start uh, right away here in June under a distance learning format. Uh, so we have some opportunities for some of our students to do a little catch up work uh, if they have that opportunity. Uh, and also later on this summer, because we didn't have an opportunity to invite like incoming fifth graders over to the Kennedy Secondary School for tours, we will look to have a, an extended um, night start program that we usually run in August anyway. Um, plenty of opportunities for those new students, not only in fifth grade, but in other grade levels, to be invited to the building um, for some tours and sharing of some information uh, so that they'll be all set for the start of school next September. So we ask parents to uh, watch for a mailing coming uh, around the first part of August uh, to indicate times and places in relationship to that Right Start program for those students and for our fifth graders. Uh, and then as uh, Mr. Colbeck and Mrs. Ron indicated, um, we 
also have a big task in front of us here in relationship to the return of school materials that might be out there. And so um, we have an extended schedule on that just to be able to um, accommodate uh, all the people that we need to stop by uh, to drop off um, Chromebooks, uh, hotspots, textbooks, and the classroom materials, um, school owned instruments, um, maybe some music clothing in, in there. Uh, anything else basically that's the property of the school um, and so we publish this out to our parents but just for a review um, we're looking to invite grade levels sixth and seventh grade to come in on june 4th with some extended hours from eight to seven and then this should be easy to remember because we went then by by date grade level after that so on june 5th we'll have our fifth graders come in from eight until five uh, this is basically just for Parents to drop, uh, drive by, uh, park in the bus loading zone. We'll have some tables just outside of door C and door D of the bowling gym. And uh, we're going to ask you to put all these materials in a plastic bag with the name of the students in the grade level. Uh, put on a piece of paper inside the plastic bag. You can just drop it off at the door. We'll take it from there. Um, and we just appreciate everybody helping us bring that back course of these next couple weeks. And the following week on June 8th, we'll have our 8th grade uh, students bring their materials back. June 9th for 9th grade, June 10th for 10th grade, and June 11th for 11th grade. All between the hours of 8th and 5th. So um, we're looking forward to kind of getting some materials back, and putting an inventory on those, and getting everything ready for next fall. Um, so with that, uh, I think I will just open up for any questions out there. Any questions for Mr. Monkey? Do, Dean, I got one quick question for you. Um, if we have parents who have kids in like three different grades, can they drop off all three kids' things on one day? I mean, do they have to drop off the eighth graders on the eighth? No, that's not a problem at all. Um, we'll basically take materials anytime we can get them back. You know, if you have a fifth grader and a ninth grader and an eleventh grader and you bring them all in, that's fantastic. You probably would be able to help us if you have two or three students to bring them back in two or three different bags. So we could just bring the name of one student, one grade level in each bag as you bring it back. Um, but to bring it back all at the same time is no problem whatsoever. We'll take anything we can get. I think the other thing on the fireworks, I think for people in the community and, and I think some of the staff, I know there's they're probably going to be parking on the bypass. That's usually a pretty good viewing area up there where they can stay in their cars and maybe even you know, the parking lot will be open on the uh, Prairie Wetlands. But I've heard a couple of people saying that they're going to be parked up there to watch the fireworks. Yeah, from what I'm hearing, and I know nothing about fireworks, but uh, in the past they've had shows that they put on with what they call twos and fours. Um, and what we're getting in this show, in this show are going to be four sixes and eights by way of size and fireworks. So it sounds like it's going to be a, uh, a not very long show, but an intense one um, that will probably be nice and high and nice and loud. So, um, you know, we can't, uh, obviously, we're, we're not offering any ideas in relationship to where people can go. We're just kind of concerned about where um, our seniors and those families will be located right there on the grounds. There's plenty of areas right around there, I think, with uh, large parking lots and things like that. So we just ask that people be safe as they find a place to view. Uh, but it sounds like it's going to be a, uh, an intense show, like 12 to 15 minutes, uh, but of uh, a really nice quality. So uh, I think they're going to be able to be seen from a long ways away. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Monkey. Okay, our last report is from Superintendent Drake. All right, good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'd like to start out and just uh, say congratulations to our seniors. Uh, this is a culmination and a celebratory uh, opportunity after a 13-year journey in our school district. And to me, uh, two of the most exciting days of the school year are first day of school, uh, when uh, students come through the doors and they're ready and eager to uh, to learn and be with their friends. And, uh, partake in all the activities that are afforded in the district 
And then graduation night, uh, when you see those seniors and the young men and women that they've become along the journey, and uh, to celebrate their accomplishments and wish them well in all future endeavors. Uh, special thanks go out to all the people that uh, took time to plan a special ceremony for them under these very unusual circumstances this year. Uh, I think the program is really going to be uh, wonderful and look forward to uh, the celebration with the fireworks and everything afterwards. Uh, I think it's uh, going to be a nice send off for those uh, seniors and their families and we hope to connect face to face at some point in the future uh, to congratulate them in person when we're able. Uh, I want to thank uh, certainly the staff uh, for all their hard work this year. Um, we've had a very good year, uh, but certainly have had our share of challenges, uh, especially this fourth quarter uh, with the distance learning model. Uh, I know that everyone uh, worked very hard. Uh, they were flexible, taking on different roles and responsibilities. Uh, we saw really some uh, tremendous work going on, uh, people going above and beyond in terms of their creativity and uh, trying to offer really engaging lessons and we learned a lot and grew a lot as an organization through this experience and we've already had uh, conversations about uh, taking what we've learned and what went well and making sure we don't lose that uh, when hopefully we're back in a normal educational experience uh, September 8th next fall uh, because there's a lot that we can do to augment our teaching practices that we learned this spring uh, uh, by trial under fire, I guess you would say. Uh, I want to thank uh, several uh, organizations, uh, the City of uh, Fergus Falls for all its help, um, and within that, uh, the Police Department and Fire Department uh, for their help with uh, graduation. Uh, certainly the 544 Foundation, um, our PTOs, uh, dollars for Scholars, uh, who did a really nice job, uh, again, recognizing uh, many of our seniors with um, scholarship dollars that will help them fulfill their dreams that they have uh, plans to pursue after graduation. Um, Mr. Monkey had uh, mentioned the extended, uh, the summer programming that we do uh, between extended school year, which is for some special ed students, um, our credit recovery, our otter adventures, uh, that stuff will take place uh, distance learning. Um, otter adventures won't start till late, uh, late in July, but uh, we have a distance learning model through mid-July for any of those programs uh, that are starting earlier. And then uh, we plan to be face-to-face -face from about mid-July uh, through the end of August with those programs and uh, hopefully uh, uh, the models uh, in terms of the coronavirus uh, will allow us to uh, do that. We're looking forward to getting back to face-to-face -face work with our students. Um, with that, uh, we look forward to the uh, parade celebrations that are going on at the elementaries as a way to um, wish everyone off to a fantastic summer. And again, uh, my thanks uh, to the school board and staff for all the support and hard work this year, and uh, we will come back uh, uh, even stronger in the fall. So thank you. Any questions for Superintendent Drake? Thank you. Moving on to our general consent items, we have the minutes for the May 11th, 2020 board meeting. Uh, personnel, Lane Jenke. Yes, good morning everyone. Um, we have a few items of uh, interest here. Certified staff resignation, we have Kristen Knudsen, uh, elementary teacher at Adams, and Scott Kobeck during his report had a uh, brief board on that um, resignation. Certi certified staff retirement, um, Terry Mullum, she's been a special ed teacher uh, here at Kennedy Secondary School for 10 years and we have resolution during the new business on her. And then a support staff retirement of Gary Fredrickson, he's been a part-time custodian for the last five years at Roosevelt Education along with the resolution in um, later on in the new business. And then last the um, item, last item that I have here is a head coach hire and that would be Joel Heikus, head boys soccer coach, um, going into this next fall here. So I would recommend all those four board approval. Thank you, Elaine. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the general consent items? I'll make that motion. Kirby, thank you. Do we have a second? One second. Thank you, Melanie. Uh, any discussion? Roll call, please. Uh, Kirby Anderson. Yes. Natalie Knudsen. Yes. 
Melanie Cole. Yes. Matthew Lemke. Yes. Is he Hermes? Yes. Stephen Migasa. Yes. Thank you. Moving on to old business, we have the new school board policy 713 uh, student activity accounts. Do we have a motion to approve that? Thank you, Missy. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Kirby. Uh, any discussion? Okay, roll call, please. Natalie Knudsen. Yes. Melanie Cole. Yes. Matthew Lemke. Yes. Missy Hermes. Yes. Stephen Vigasa. Yes. Anderson. Yes. Uh, the motion carries. Thank you. Moving on to new business. Our first item is the extended school year uh, services and summer school for special education students. Uh, this is an annual motion. So, do we have a somebody want to offer that motion? I'll offer that motion. Thank you, Melanie. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Missy. Uh, any discussion? Okay, roll call, please. Melanie Cole. Yes. Yes. Is he Hermes? Yes. Stephen Vigasa? Yes. Kirby Anderson? Yes. Natalie Knudsen? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you. Item number two is our is the 2020-2021 resolution for membership in the Minnesota State High School League. Uh, the resolution reads resolved that the governing board of school district number 544 County of Otter Tail, State of Minnesota, delegates the control, supervision, and regulation of interscholastic athletic and fine arts events. I uh, refer to Minnesota Statute Section 128C.01 to the Minnesota State High School League. And so hereby certifies to the State Commissioner of Education as provided for by Minnesota Statutes. Further resolve that the Fergus Falls High School is authorized by this. The governing board of said school district or school to renew its membership in the Minnesota State High School League and participate. And item number two is participate in the approved inter school activities sponsored by said league and its various subdivisions. Further resolve that the governing board hereby adopts the constitution, bylaws, rules, and regulations of said league and all amendments thereto as the same as are published in the latest edition of the League Official Handbook on file at the Office of the School District or as appears on the League's website as the minimum standard governing participation in said League-sponsored activities and that the administration and responsibility for determining student eligibility and for the supervision of school activities are assigned to the official representative identified by the governing board. Will somebody offer that resolution move for its adoption? I'll offer that resolution. Thank you, Kirby. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Melanie. Uh, any discussion? Again, this is an annual resolution. Roll call, please. Stephen Bigasa. Yes. Kirby Anderson. Yes. Natalie Knudsen. Yes. Melanie Cole. Yes. Matthew Lemke. Yes. C. Kirby's. Yes. The resolution is adopted. Thank you. Item number three is the call for workers' compensation insurance bids. Um, do we have a motion to approve that for the call? So moved. Thank you, Missy. Do we have a second? A second. Thank you, Melanie. Blake, do you have anything you want to share about it? It's just an annual. Okay. Any other? Do you have any questions? Roll call, please. Kirby Anderson. Yes. Natalie Knudsen. Yes. Melanie Cole. Yes. Matthew Lemke. Yes. Missy Hermes. Yes. Stephen Bigasa. Yes. Uh, the motion carries. Thank you. Uh, Melanie Cole is going to offer the following resolution, item number four. Whereas Terry Mellon began her employment with Fergus Falls School District in August 2010, and whereas Terry has been a valued employee with Fergus Falls Public Schools for the past 10 years, Whereas Terry has done an excellent job as a special education teacher for the district, and now therefore be it resolved by the Fergus Falls School Board to thank Terry Mallon for her 10 years of dedicated service to the Fergus Falls Public Schools. I will offer that resolution move for its adoption. Thank you, Melanie. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Kurt. 
Here we. Uh, any discussion? Roll call, please. Yes. Um, is he Yes. Stephen Vegasuck. Yes. Kirby Anderson. Yes. Natalie Knudsen. Yes. Melanie Cole. Yes. Matthew Lipton. Yes. The resolution is adopted. Thank you. Item number five is the resolution on the retirement of Gary Fredrickson. Whereas Gary Fredrickson began his employment with the Fergus Falls Public Schools in September 2015. And whereas Gary has been a valued employee with the Fergus Falls Public Schools for the past five years. And whereas Gary has done an excellent job as a custodian for the district. And now, ther now, therefore, be it resolved by the Fergus Falls School Board to thank Gary Fredrickson for his five years of dedicated service to the Fergus Falls Public Schools. Will somebody offer that resolution move for its adoption? I'd like to offer that resolution and move for its adoption. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Manley. Uh, any discussion? Roll call, please. Kirby Anderson. Yes. Natalie Kudusa. Now we can. Okay. Now we can. Okay. Item number six is the. Yes, I guess. <laughs> we heard you talking, so we figured that was a yes. <laughs> uh, item number six is to set the FY21 regular meal rate for adults to three dollars and eighty-five cents for lunch, and a dollar ninety for breakfast, according to MDE and USDA guidelines. Do somebody want to offer that motion to approve? I'll offer that. Thank you, Missy. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Melanie. Any discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Kirby Anderson. Yes. Natalie Knudsen. Yes. Melanie Cole. Yes. Matthew Lipke. Yes. Missy Kirby's. Yes. Stephen Vegasa. Yes. The motion carries. Thank you. Item number seven is the FY 2021 School District Membership Agreement with Lakes Country Service Co Cooperative. Uh, do we have a motion to approve that? I'll make that motion. Thank you, Kirby. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Melanie. Uh, any discussion? Roll call, please. Natalie Knudsen. Yes. Melanie Cole. Yes. Matthew Lemke. Yes. Missy Kirby's? Yes. Stephen Bigasa? Yes. Kirby Anderson? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you. That concludes our regular school board meeting. Our next regular school board meeting will be Monday, June 8th at 7 a.m. right here at the Otter Community Room at Kennedy Secondary School. Uh, following this, we will go into a work session to talk about the portrait of a graduate, class numbers, buildings and grounds position, graduation, and student handbook. With that, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you, Melly. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Let's see. Any discussion? One more roll call, please. One more roll call. Yay. <laughs> okay. Kirby Anderson. Yes. Natalie Knudsen. Yes. Melanie Cole. Yes. Matthew Lemke. Yes. Missy Hermes. Yes. Stephen Vegasa. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. We are adjourned.